G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. Today's video is about keeping warm in your sleeping bag. The other week I made a video about my most used sleeping bag. It's rated to about 7 degrees centigrade, <clears throat> so it's not the warmest. In that one I showed you what I'm adding to the actual sleeping bag itself to the sleep mat to be able to use it in a cooler weather without having to go out and buy a more expensive sleeping bag to do the same thing. Now today we're going to be looking at what you can personally do to keep warmer when sleeping and as most of you know if you're warmer in your sleeping bag you're going to be more comfortable you're going to get better night's sleep with a better night's sleep the next day if you're going to go out hiking you're going to be able to just enjoy the day more instead of feeling a little bit lethargic and tired from a bad night's sleep so the first thing we're going to start from the feet and work our way up <coughs> is a good pair of winter socks that will make a big difference. Now me personally, I find that most sleeping bags, the foot box isn't always warm enough. My feet always get cold. But from about the waist up, I'm normally quite warm. So it could be that or I'm just getting old. But the importance about wearing socks for comfort is make sure the bit that goes around your calf or your ankles isn't too tight because if it is tight you're going to wake up with all those ridges in there it's going to compress and reduce your blood flow so your feet aren't going to get as warm as it should be and it's just not going to be as comfortable so it's going to make your sleep a little bit less so so there's your first thing a good pair of socks winter socks for the cold weather they range in prices I think this pair cost about 40 Australian dollars you can get them cheaper, <coughs> excuse me again, and you can pay a lot more for a good pair of socks. Now the second thing to use, again on the feet, a pair of down booties. Now your socks you're going to be using whether you're walking in the daytime and at night when you're sleeping. Now these, you're not really going to be wearing these in the daytime when you're hiking. They're going to be at night time when you're in your tent. But with a down, it's going to make your feet so much more comfortable, a lot warmer, for very little extra weight. I think they're about 100 grams or 130 grams for the pair. So, yeah. So with that, with the combination of your socks, your feet are going to be even warmer. So that's going to give you a better night's sleep. The downfall about down booties is if you get any pressure on them and it compresses the down that spot is not going to be as warm as where the down is all puffed up so for example if you sleep on your side that part's going to be on the ground so that part's going to be flattened so you're only going to have a small amount of down there but it's not going to be fluffed up so it's the actual insulation of that is going to be a lot lower than the part where there's no weight on it so you're going to have a nice warm patch here, underneath it's going to be warmer, down the back it's going to be warmer, but you can have the weight of either your other foot, like that on top, or the weight of the sleeping bag on there, which will reduce the actual insulation on the top. But your feet are going to feel a lot warmer because of all the other areas that are nice and warm and toasty and not cold, and that will help keep the other parts warm. So there are a big bonus, and these are the nature hike ones. I've got the Sundic ones over there, which I wear at home when I'm sat at the computer. I also put them on when I'm wearing my cinema to Ugg boots, but they're a very cheap version of them. There's an, a gap in there where it moves around, wearing the actual down booties, fills that gap up, and then allows them boots to be nice and warm now in the winter. But with these ones, these are the nature height ones, and these are my favourite because these have actually got an elastic part here on the inside which holds up against your ankle, 
and then at the top here we've got an elasticated cord with a line lock on it to tighten up so that will hold around your calf so that's going to keep you warmer because it's going to stop the heat going out so if you are going to get a pair of booties try and get a pair where you got like i said the insulated the elastic bit here that holds the heat in then the top bit so you can get a second layer there so it stops the heat escaping all the way but yeah they are very comfortable and the nature hike the actual sizing when you buy these is more accurate than the sundic the sundic these are uh yeah, the Sundic actually came and they were supposed to be up to a size bigger than my feet and they actually feel like they're a size smaller. So that's why I only use them at home. Nature Hike, I've got plenty of room around there. It puffs up a lot better than the Sundic does. It's just a lot warmer and they are my favourite. No, these aren't for walking around the camp, but they have got a thicker base on the bottom. So it's mainly for walking around your tent, if you've got a big tent that is, or if you're sitting in your tent, or if you just need to nip out for a call of nature, but it's not for walking around the camp. So we've got the socks, and we've got our down booties. And the next part is our legs. Now my original pair are these, wore out they were about 12 15 years old and they were made out of a, a man-made material so i've been looking for some merino ones which are reasonably priced and even on sale at half price they've all been 50 60 70 australian dollars so yeah i left it and left it and i walked, uh, went into aldi and these were less than 20 Australian dollars. Apart from the stitching and your waist belt being elasticated, it's a 100% merino wool. I haven't been out yet in these uh, to test them, so that'll be a future video. I'll let you know how they go. But I put them on at home and I put my hiking pants over the top. I walked around for an hour, sat at my computer, and then I went took these off just had my walking pants on and instantly just in home I could feel how cold my legs were with just the walking pants on them and no base layer so a thermal base layer long pants long johns whatever you want to call them <coughs> will increase your comfort rating while you're in your sleeping bag It'll make you feel warmer so each section of your body that you warm up will help the rest of you feel warmer with it so whether it's a psychological thing or an actual physical act <coughs> it does all help so my seven degree sleeping bag with uh, just by putting it inside a bivy with the actual mesh zip done up, if you have a look in the other video. And just the little things I did for then, it, I got it down to about two degrees. And I was not cold, but I wasn't warm. But I was you just at that point where I could sleep comfortably. So we've got the socks, put them over there now. We've got the booties, and we've got your long base layer for your legs and your bum and all the bits from there down so that's normally the coldest part of me so that for me will probably take me down a couple of degrees centigrade or make me start feeling warm at the same temperature where I was just at that point where I wasn't warm and I wasn't cold so that's a positive next now I want to replace this with the actual merino wool but this is a man-made material now is it a what's it called yeah polypropylene now these come in 
different materials one different colors as well so they come in different colors too long sleeve as I've got here we've got short sleeve this is a round neck I've got a v-neck in there uh, with a short sleeve I've got another one where I've got a little bit of a collar so it comes around my neck but it's got a zip up the front and even this one here which isn't as warm as merino or as comfortable uh, for me that is other people might find this more comfortable than merino I've heard people say merino makes an itch and scratch I don't have that issue I think it's the quality of the merino wool that you actually buy and this feels lovely and soft on the bottom so fingers crossed but yeah these as a base layer they'll keep you nice and warm and make you feel even more comfortable so you do get a better night's sleep when that on its own I no no even though the sleep but you actually on all sleeping bags or if not almost the comfort rating is for somebody either wearing a thermal base layer from neck down to the feet or uh, night clothes your PJs from your neck down to your feet that's how most comfort ratings are worked out and actually sleeping in a tent which has a four season inner so that's in the uh, for the colder temperatures when they rate it down to the comfort so yeah so if you're in a three-sided shelter like on the Bibbleman track you're going to lose the insulation of your tent and your insulation of your four season inner so your comfort rating isn't going to be as low and the same as if you're sleeping under a tarp you, you've got three sides open so your comfort rating is going to be even uh, worse so instead of being say for example seven degrees in a, then in a tent with four season inner going into the cabin with three sides like on the Bilberman track or the Appalachian Trail on that your comfort rating will probably go up to nine ten degrees centigrade and then if you're in under a tarp your comfort rating is going to be about maybe 12 13 14 degrees centigrade so all these things are part of keeping it warm it's not just the clothes you wear it's not just your sleeping bag it's not just your sleeping mat it's not just your tent it's a combination of all of them so this here and um, will help keep you warmer in your sleeping bag and it'll probably help you at the comfort rating of your sleeping bag as long as you've got all the other things like the decent sleep mat the decent four season inner of your tent or all those sorts of things so we've got the socks now we've got the booties for the feet they'll cover up the ankles of the leggings here the long uh, long johns or your thermals <clears throat> so there's going to be no cold spot coming up and then this as well that will overlap the actual bottoms or you can tuck them into the bottoms if you're comfortable doing that so you actual <coughs> excuse me got insulation up to about here and down to your wrists so that's the top I'll hang that back up now I mentioned about feet are done legs are done body's done arms are done next thing hands now a lot of people don't like wearing gloves but if you are wanting to keep warm you're going to need a pair of gloves now these are the uh, thinsulate insulated ones these are so we've got a nice fleecy inner by the feels of it and then we've got I don't know if it's real wool but it feels like it is on the outside so there's two layers there so I'll be keeping my hands warm next the only issue with wearing gloves is if you want to get up for a call of nature and you're using a sleeping bag you're gonna to have to take your gloves off and unzip it get out come back and zip it all up put your glove back on or at least one glove or where are they up here use something like these which they're like a mitten but they're fingerless gloves at the same time so there's your fingerless glove so if you need to get out at night 
Oh, so if you're in your sleeping bag and it's cold night, you have the mitten folded over. H hands, fingers, nice and warm. Get out, fingers there, so unzip your tent, do your business, go back in. So from here down, it's nice and warm. And then we just flick that back over and go back to sleep. So you've got the, pull that out, you've got your mittens which I've got them folding over a bit and you got the gloves now temperature wise between these there's not much difference between these mittens here and these if, if I'm walking outside I've got my poles movement wise my body's pumping heat around so I don't feel much difference in temperature between the two different types. You may be different, it's just a matter of trial and error. So now we've got socks, booties, leggings, a therm thermal ones, thermal top base layer, or their bottom base layer, and two different types of gloves that you can use. And again, the only part of this so far you're not going to use if you're hiking on a cold day are the booties. Everything else, you're going to have your warm socks, you're going to have your warm base layer, you're going to have your warm gloves, you're going to have your warm base layer here. And then the last thing I'll be showing today is for my head. Now I've used wool beanies before, just with your normal wool, and that has made me feel itchy. It hasn't felt as comfortable, hasn't felt as warm. I've ended up with the lines on the actual uh, knitting, the stitching and that. So I changed to a merino one. This was probably the best thing I did. This is a winter version. Is it uh, from Helicon Tech? They call it, yeah, the winter merino beanie. And it's from Helicon Tech. <clears throat> now I've got three of these and I, for my personal use, I recommend them. Not only are you going to wear them to keep the top of your head warm in the day, and as the weather cools down, you're able to lower the brim down, then lower it down even more, cover your neck, a little bit more of your face. I'm going to keep all my head warm, and this is a double layer, these are. It's thinner, it feels like it's thinner, it's more, uh, it's not as harsh no sun they'll stick on your head and they're just hard they feel they feel tight this doesn't it's plenty of movement and flexible another good thing about a beanie is at night time if you want to have a lane without the light waking up too soon or you want to keep yourself a little bit warmer there you go pull that down so you're covered from the tip of your nose all the way around bottom of your neck ears are nice and warm and you're asleep So what's that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six items and ways to warm yourself up in your sleeping bag. So a good pair of winter socks, down booties, merino thermal base layer, pair of gloves or mitts, thermal base layer for your top, and a beanie. So that's going to make a big difference. <coughs> Excuse me. So, like I said, apart from the booties, you can use these when you're hiking. So, an extra 100, 130 grams for warmer feet at night is nothing to add to your pack. So, I hope that's given you some ideas and enabled you to save some money instead of going from a regular sleeping bag, three season and then pushing it up to the tip or just going into the winter with saving yourself some money it looks like it might take you all the way through the winter doing this sort of thing and what i've done to my sleeping bag or what i'm using with my sleeping bag say and it could save you what four five six hundred dollars australian say for buying a winter and all this here they were about $25, they like I said they were $40, $50 they were, so that's $75, these were $95, these here, here's 
here they were about $25 each so that's say 120 and this one I got on sale but that was about 50 60 Australian dollars so for less than $200 you get your gear for walking through in the daytime and for adding to your regular sleeping bag at night time to keep warm but as I said it's all part of a combination this won't instantly change that to that it's part of getting the right sleeping mat which stops the cold coming up from the floor and dragging the heat out of your body so that will keep your floor uh, warm and most of them have got an insulation in the, the one I use it's got a um, it's, it's got like a fiber I can't remember what it's called but it's got a fiber insulation as well as a reflective insulation and that's rated at 3.1 but I've taken that comfortably down to minus 2 minus 3 and I haven't felt any cold I've actually felt slightly warm on it so a combination of good sleep mat and a decent sleeping bag what you add to the sleeping bag it's not my sleeping bag is the snug pack special forces cost me around about uh, the hundred Australian dollars or less I can't remember to be honest but wherever you are in the world it'll probably cost more and might cost less and that's like I said using the bug net having that zip top which helps keep the temperature in the sleeping bag and makes that a little bit warmer and then a couple of things to add to that as well they all slowly add up and if you look at that video and this video you can add things to it you can take things away from it and you can adjust it going through the seasons from the summer season going all the way up into the winter season so your autumn into your winter into your spring back into the summer with one sleeping bag and less money than buying a winter sleeping bag now if you're going to the antarctic and the temperatures are way down low and that sort of thing then yes you are going to have to invest in a damn good sleeping bag but as a normal hiker like i said the temperature just get below zero here in australia this is a sort of thing you can add to your gear so you can be using most of it for the actual hiking side of it in the daytime take it off bit at a time as you warm up and as the day warms up or add on as it starts to cool down so the choice is yours so i hope you've enjoyed the video and it's helped you and if you're not a subscriber please go down below and click on the subscribe button click the notification bell next to it and select all so you can be notified of all future videos and hit the thumbs up button the like button and if you are already a subscriber again i thank you very much.